I would now like to uh, introduce uh, via Skype one of the people who's most aggressively and most creatively organizing people uh, around the country and around the world to look at innovation for jobs. This is at the key of this issue. Um, let's hear via Skype from David Nord first. Hello, everyone. So I, I heard the last talk here, and, and uh, you know, if we ask the question, what do we need people to do? Uh, there can always be a technology optimist that whatever we answer can say, soon a machine can do that too. But what if we instead ask, who do we need people to be? Well, then it's more difficult to say um, soon the machine can be that too, because then we kind of humanize the machines. Uh, so another question that we could ask is, uh, what is the most value that a person can create? Uh, and there is also, you can't answer that a machine can do too, because then you kind of put the focus on the, on, on the human. So there are two ways, actually, of, of seeing the economy, and that's uh, seeing an economy where stuff needs to get done. It's, it's a task-centered economy. But then we can also have a, a human-centered economy, right? So where the people are put in, in the center of everything. So the task-centered economy, then, would be about uh, minimizing the cost of tasks. And the people-centered economy would be about maximizing the value of people. Uh, today, we think very much in terms of a task-centered economy. And I think it's very difficult to, to discuss the value of people in that language, because we, we discuss only the tasks. So um, I happen to think that the people-centered economy is uh, probably more competitive than the task-centered economy because, you know, you can automate everything, and then you have still people who can do, who can create value for each other, and if they can create value, there's an economy. So basically, it's like seeing the difference between machines as replacements for people, and seeing machines as tools. So uh, this, this has actually happened before several times, and, and not so long time ago, um, computers were seen as uh, automation, uh, simply just replacement of people. This was in the 60s and 70s. And then there were people like uh, Doug Engelbart who introduced the idea of that computers can actually augment the human mind. Uh, so he invented the personal computer, the PC. And as it turned out, the PC turned out to be a pretty good market for computing. Um, and that's actually the, the main market today. So we can, can, we, can we make a kind of a people-centered economy with all the technologies that we now uh, fear will take all our jobs, because they can do so much. So the question would be then, all this artificial intelligence and so on, can, can we use that for disrupting unemployment uh, instead of destroying all jobs? And I believe we can. And I, I believe that this economy will be much, uh, it will have much more growth. It will um, make everybody happier. Uh, it can save the middle class. Th think of this example, right? That you, we can use this technology um, that we have to, to combine somebody's very special abilities in Alaska with somebody else's very special abilities in South Africa to uh, satisfy somebody's very special needs in Beijing, right? We can do that now. We can, uh, we can create a long-tail labor economy. We can create 
absolutely wonderful matching systems that can actually offer people uh, opportunities, job opportunities that exactly match uh, their, their skills, their talents, their passions, and, and put them together with people that they actually like working with. So, so today, uh, the labor market is strongly dysfunctional. Uh, which I think kind of enables this discussion that that uh, machines can replace people, uh, because we we kind of stuck in these in this thought that people aren't really people. People are just units that do things that that does stuff that other people need to have done for them. We don't see them as anything anything sort of humanly unique. Uh, so today, then it's like. You know, l less than half of the world's population have have a good job, um, meaning like a full-time job. These are numbers from Gallup. And um, out of them, it's something like 83% are not engaged in what they do, right? So roughly... Half of all the people in the world are, are not in the workforce, and of those who are, maybe only one in five care about what they do. I mean, that's absolutely dismal numbers, dismal. You know, uh, the, we, we are using uh, labor market structured in a very old-fashioned way. I mean, we, we say, okay, we need people who bake. This is very task-centered again. And we need people who can bake. If they are certified that they can bake, then we call them baker, and then we match them with baking jobs. Well, today CEOs are saying, maybe we want bakers who can do other things too. We want bakers are good painters and bus drivers and the creative and so on. But if these people who are creative and bakers and bus drivers and so on try applying for jobs, then HR will say, well, you know, make up your mind. Are you a baker or a bus driver? I mean, it, it, it just doesn't fit in to the uh, existing system. The, the people that we want in the economy today uh, are not favored by the, by the structure of the labor market that we have and the way we have of matching people with jobs. Now, we did this once upon a time because this was maybe the simplest way of, of managing tasks and people and economy uh, because we didn't have advanced computers to do all the kind of complex matching that we can do today. Uh, now it's different. I mean, now we can envision something like match.com instead of monster.com for building teams that do things uh, that help people uh, that help people create value for one another. So uh, I think that if if we if we reframe the thought, if we introduce what I would think is not the very strange thought that economy is about people, it is about people creating value for one another. How do we maximize that value? And how do we, um, how, how do we create an economy for calculating or, or building business around maximizing this value? So I think we, we need to think about what innovation for jobs is, the innovation that, that uh, raises the value of people rather than than just makes tasks cheaper. Uh, and how do we create an innovation ecosystem around that? How do we create an ecosystem of innovative companies that find so many valuable things to do for people in the world that instead of having people competing for jobs, we will get jobs competing for people. I mean, when I hear people say that machines can do everything, well, okay, so maybe a machine can give me a good job then. Uh, David, 
We're going to have yes. to uh, wrap it up now because the next uh, uh, speaker is coming in online. Um, right. Uh, for all of you who want to look further into the really exciting work that David's doing, uh, the uh, I for J, letter I, number four J uh, summit um, is, is happening soon. Um, I just joined uh, the uh, advisory group for, for, for that organization. It's really, really exciting work. It's really, really very focused. And you just got a brief little taste of it today from David. Um, so we can put you in touch. Uh, David, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.